yes, who played the role of Saint, so on, and who already heard about her solid. Oh, opportunity to tell something new. So in my presentation, I will talk uh, how wider data captured by UIDs can be used to represent the real world in different projects. Um, in this case, it is more as a geospatial digital twin, so the background for digital twin. And why I decided to concentrate on data captured by UIVs. Who heard about DJI thing? Okay, so Sam. So basically, like two years ago, I think, they released a one LiDAR system, and this changed LiDAR business significant. It is not just DJI. Also, some other uh, hardware producers, they also released uh, systems with a uh, low-cost uh, LiDAR scanner. And some others also planning to do uh, some similar stuff. Not sure if they just want to stay competitive or it was the idea. Uh, but basically, this made LiDAR technology more accessible and more affordable. As well, LiDAR projects, usually they are large-scale projects, uh, complicated, mostly handled by national agencies. The drone, in contrast, can be easily deployed in a project area, so it means that it reduces the time just to prepare for data collection. And one more thing that it becomes easier to integrate multi sensors. So, besides LiDAR data, it is possible to collect uh, HD images, thermal information, uh, multi spectral images. And how TerraSolid is related with this LiDAR business. So, TerraSolid is software for point cloud and images processing. The software is in Finland and Helsinki, but we are present in most countries. So quite many national mapping agencies using the software as for uh, regional agencies. And to understand how wide the software can be used, so it has full sets for eight industries. When I'm talking about industries, it's like power line, uh, inspection, road, railroads, uh, mining, and so on. Uh, about the data, what kind of data are solid can process? So all point clouds. No matter the source, sensor, or project scale. And in my presentation, I will concentrate on data captured by UIDs, but ALS, NLS, a handheld scanner collected data is also possible to process, as well photogrammetric files. Uh, so, classified point cloud or vectorized objects can be utilized in uh, in the decision making. So, it can be uh, well used in uh, engineering, construction. Uh, planning, and so on. In this example, uh, I wanted to show how different attributes can be used for classification and as well later on uh, to go further with modeling. Uh, so some uh, scanners, not actually scanners, the systems allow to assign the RGB color uh, to point out this is that kind of example, the points colorized, as well dimension can be computed, so linear, planar, features, 
the echo return information is written into the point cloud distance information. So quite many things how you can use for what to use for classification. In this example, that yellow, uh, say, plus yellow classes. So here uh, it was classified using intensity. The moving objects removed uh, automatically using moving object routine as an unnecessary noise. Here you can see as well that intensity was used. Uh, here data visualized by slope. This can be useful in detecting rats and potholes. The UID data is not maybe the best shot, but from mobile is quite well visible. And from triangulated model, in this case, a uh, tram line is quite well visible. Uh, when we have classified houses, uh, the building vectorization is possible. And then the final stage where you have uh, classified point clouds, detected features, and additional modeling as, for example, proximity to the vegetation, uh, noise uh, barrier for, from the tram line, and so on can be calculated. So this was the example that in case you want to use a point cloud as a background for digital twin, you need to do some data preparation and classification. And now, how TerraSolid can help with this classification. So, there are two uh, options. First is more uh, simplified. So, basically, the wizard does most of the things for you. Uh, data import and data classification is handled by user. This was done more for UID's user. They don't want to know so much about the process. The second option is when users can do some modifications according to the data. And the process is still automatic, just there's more steps. Uh, to refine the process. Now let's look uh, deeper into this wizard. So as I mentioned, the data import is managed by this wizard and the, the wizard not only reads in LIDAR and not well, actually just uh, not necessarily just LIDAR, any point clouds, as well the trajectory information, but it can do reprojection to local coordinate system as well adjustment to geo. Uh, the second step combines uh, all classification steps to one dialog and gives opportunity either to process everything at once or do uh, some uh, split some manual inspection and validation between the steps. So after the classification is done, users would have classified point cloud, which can be used for DPM export and uh, applied for specific processing. And here is the journey from raw point cloud to classify point cloud. First of all, the data was uh, read in into the software, so trajectories and point cloud information. Um, so this this is everything of what what you have, all overlap and noise. And as a final result, the software gives classified software where uh, ground is classified, uh, vegetation and trees detected, uh, cars as well, uh, walls and building groups. And 
So here was the automatic classification during the desert. And further, as I mentioned, when you have a classified point cloud, it's possible to go further with some specific analysis. So here yeah, was quite just for, for displaying what can be done as a buffer from tramline, uh, vegetation shadows, uh, some sol solar uh, information. And now I will move uh, the examples how software can be used uh, for specific projects. So TerraSolid is used for power line processing, but one of the industries where it's used. And uh, what you can do with that kind of data, so uh, usually wire detection and uh, object detection in clearance zone. Here is the result. Uh, wires detected. Maybe it's not the best resolution, but that pinkish lines, they are vectors. And software use the point cloud to place the vectors. At the same time, also the points on the wires were classified. So the vectorization and classification happen at once. Uh, everything automatically. Software tries to detect the wires according to some uh, algorithms. And when you have vectorized wires, it's possible to export, to use that for simulation. One more thing that can be done, uh, detection of dangerous vegetation. So these uh, red points, maybe it's not the best quality of the point cloud, but this UAV captured. So low cost scanner. And those trees were detected as dangerous trees by calling tree logic. So what software done, it detected the tree and it tried to modulate if the tree just falls, if it hits the power line buffer or not. And as well, those dangerous trees can be exported uh, for some results. One more use case of UID liner is terrain modeling. Maybe it looks a bit messy this slide, but what I wanted to tell is uh, for terrain modeling, you need to have quite well classified ground. So probably you start with data quality improvement, if there is any calibration issues or mismatch between flight passes, probably you need to do that. Then uh, ground surface detection, and after ground is classified, additionally, the positioning improvement can be done uh, comparing point cloud with known points. If needed, adjust to known points. And the final result, so when you have classified ground, uh, there's possibility to produce digital elevation models. Uh, the export uh, formats, they are quite wide. You can produce surfaces, uh, geotips, some other formats also for art map. Uh, triangulated model, not uh, the triangles, so for example, land XML, as well as quantum production, and if you are working with uh, mining projects, then the stockpiles volume calculation is also possible. And one more example is uh, mapping in cities area. So when you have classified buildings, uh, that points can be used to, to vectorize the buildings. And the vectors is used for adding the textures to the buildings. 
In this example, uh, the trees and vegetation, uh, they are, it's from point cloud brought to this model. Uh, the walls are vectorized from oblique images and uh, roofs from native. And this was the last example that I prepared, how you can use uh, LiDAR data for mapping or as a background for your projects. Thank you. Thank you, Iska. Uh, your illustrations were dynamic and colorful and have uh, caused a lot of questions. <laughs> so one of the questions is, how much time does it actually take to process data in, in this kind of fashion? Can you give some estimates based on some of the examples? Uh, so for example, that, uh, okay, I cannot go back, but the sample area of that city, it was Innsbruck. Uh, so, what is the area now? I don't know, but you can guess about the scale, some height buildings. And so this area to process from data import uh, to have uh, <coughs> this classified point cloud with the main classes, it took, I think, something like 10 minutes. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, next question. Which thematic accuracy do you get from the automatic processing environment for the exam? I don't like to say 99.7%. <laughs> it depends. It depends from, from the data that you have, it depends from the area, from the scanner, of course, uh, from the quality of the data. And uh, I mean, for example, building classification. It does quite a good job if there is no tree coverage, but if the tree overgrows the building, so I mean it's kind of uh, impossible to see where the roof ends and where the tree starts. So in those uh, situations, there is some errors in classification. As well, if the object is kind of specific and it's difficult to detect, so like the cars are detected quite well. But if there is like middle size van, then <laughs> not necessary to go through a detection. So there are some problems, but there is also manual editing that can improve in situations where software fails. So a related question about data quality with vectorized wires, was there a problem with this continuation and interruption of lines? Um, you mean the discontinuation where it's not connected on the towers or that it's just like the fragment of the wires? Both. Oh. Uh, so the discontinuation on the towers, it happens because this is how, and I think for the power line projects, you do not necessarily need to give like the connected wire. If you need, there is a tool to connect. About the discontinuation and fragmentation, so if you have quite big gaps in the data, it's possible that it would happen, but there's a tolerance that it should uh, con continue those lines. The next two questions are related to drones, and one of the questions is, can you easily fly the drones across cities? And secondly, uh, how many kilometers of power line survey can you get per day with drone data collection? Uh, so as I mentioned, there is a lot of more software. Uh, we have actually in-house DJI drone that sometimes we fly to collect data by our own needs, just for testing, but we don't do the big projects. And I think the limitation is, uh, I asked actually in some pairs, the DJI, what is, uh, what is the limitation? I don't remember the limit, but it's also the limitation about the battery, that you cannot fly too long and about the distance. It depends how they, because at some point they've done that if they lose the signal, the drone comes back to to the closest ground. Now I think they were doing something to come back to, to the station. So, so that question I'm not very good person to answer. Fair enough. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, we're going to try to wrap up with questions, so I'm going to ask the last two questions that are listed there uh, about the product itself. Uh, is it possible to integrate TerraSolid as an add-on or plugin with an existing system or software? And is it available as a kind of a wizard for airport LiDAR data? Uh, so about the integration as a plugin, I would say no. Uh, the software is not standalone, and it runs either on Bentley or on the more simplified CAD platform. Uh, the Bentley has quite many, like Open Roads, PowerDraft, MicroStation, and so on, so we can choose between those platforms. But as a plugin to other software, no. Is it available? Uh, is it for airborne liner data? So, as a wizard, no, because it was uh, done for uh, the small uh, projects where you just load the data, process, and have the result. But the airborne liner data, so the quality is better, you would need to adjust slightly the settings, and probably you want to work with the uh, project. Uh, style. But if you're working with a project, basically you have possibility to do the same drone functionality as a batch process. So there's not such a big difference. And today and yesterday we had a lot of talk about uh, open data. Have you contributed any of your data sets to the open data uh, uh, community? Um, not yet is the answer. <laughs> Something for the future. I mean, we don't collect data by ourselves, so we don't have what to share. If we collect this more for testing, like a small area, and I'm not sure, like we share the data sets with our users just like for the training purpose. So that one, but no, we don't have as a repository or something. Thank you very much to Justina for this. Uh,